So thank you. So I'm excited now to introduce Hadley Bachman, um, who is from the Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center. And I know we've just been talking about really um, uh, about parent and family engagement and parents' expectations for their children. Um, and I'm especially excited to have Hadley come in and talk about um, organizing and building capacity for this work on the ground. Um, and for those of you that don't know, the Statewide Family Engagement Center program is a program funded by the U.S. Department of Education that provides grants to statewide organizations to build the capacity of their state departments, their districts, and their parents around um, family engagement in their state. And this is a program that I'm lucky enough to be able to work with and work with Hadley and a bunch of her colleagues. There are currently uh, 12 grantees uh, that serve 13 states. And so really excited to hear about the work that Hadley and the Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center are doing around text messaging. Hadley? Thank you for having me. Um, I am a member of a translational research project from the Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center at the Center on Education and Training for Employment at The Ohio State University. Our work is a collaborative effort of um, Dr. Eric Anderman, a professor in the field of educational psychology at The Ohio State University, and Dr. Brett Zaromsky, assistant professor in the field of counselor education at Ohio State University. And finally, Dr. Barbara Boone, director of our center. Um, our goal is to contribute new research and build professional training for school leaders, teachers, families, and community partners to build their capacity for family engagement at the middle school level. So today I will be telling you about a pilot study we conducted in the spring of 2021. The transition to middle school, whether that happens at fifth, sixth, or seventh grade, poses unique challenges and joys for families supporting their early adolescence education. When early adolescents have several teachers, it's harder for families and teachers to develop relationships with each other. Early adolescents also desire more independence, while at the same time, they're still developing their own sense of confidence. So if these challenges are not negotiated in ways that support their developmental needs at this critical stage, early adolescents may experience a drop in motivation, an increase in acting out behaviors, a decrease in confidence, and diminishing academic performance. Early adolescents are at a risk for, of failing to reach their potential because of the changes in, in their development and in the school context, and they need special support to transition well to middle school. So research demonstrates that home-based family engagement, so that is family engagement that's occurring in the home, that's aimed at supporting early adolescents growing autonomy and confidence, while also focused on building early adolescents' academic skills, is the most beneficial at the middle school transition. This type of engagement differs from the more school-based family engagement strategies that are more effective at the elementary school level. In our study, we wanted to explore whether a brief texting intervention might help teachers and families partner better together to support their early adolescents. We partnered with a Midwest U.S. Um, urban public charter middle school serving 220 students in grades 5 through 8, of whom 34% are white, 54% are African American, 4% are Asian and Pacific Islander, 4% are multiracial, 4% are Hispanic, 28% are students with disabilities, and 64% are identified as economically disadvantaged. Our focus was primarily on shifting educator mindsets about what counts as family engagement at the middle school level. So we provided professional development for 20 school staff in developmentally appropriate family engagement at the middle school age level and on how reciprocal communication, so that is two-way communication, builds trust and efficacy. We then provided school staff with a communication series to send to 220 parents and caregivers on topics such as the value of education, how schoolwork connects to current events and future goals, learning strategies to discuss with their children, and on a style of parenting called autonomy supportive parenting. Autonomy supportive parenting is well suited for the developmental needs of middle school children because it invites participation in decision making, allows for input and listening, and communicates confidence in their abilities. As part of the communication series, parents were invited to respond and interact with the text messages through likes and comments using the app Remind. So Remind is a free app that the school is already using 
Remind allows for text-like messages to be sent between teachers and families while shielding phone numbers from each other. Before and after the communication intervention, we measured staff trust in parents and caregivers, teacher efficacy, parent and caregiver trust in the school staff, parent and caregiver efficacy, student perceptions of teacher support, and student perce perceptions of homeschool dissonance. While our sample size was too small to determine statistical significance, the comparison of post-survey responses to pre-survey responses revealed several encouraging trends for students, teachers, and parents and caregivers enrolled in our study. First, students indicated that their parents encouraged them to express themselves more in daily conversations. They also indicated more frequent conversations centering on adolescents' future plans. As both of these conversation topics were proposed in our messages, we were heartened by these results. Next, students reported decreased feelings of homeschool dissonance or the sense that the school and the home are out of step with each other. Reducing homeschool dissonance is connected to many other positive academic outcomes for students. So again, we were pleased by this result. And finally, students reported an increased sense of belonging at school, which is a particularly poignant finding situated as our study was during the height of the pandemic when all of these students were learning remotely. Turning to the teachers in the study, um, first, they reported increased confidence for promoting academic engagement with students. They also indicated increased efficacy for assisting parents and caregivers in having conversations about school with their children. Again, as this was the focus of the messages sent, we were happy to see that simply by sending these messages, teachers gained confidence in this area. Teachers also reported an increased sense of trust in their students and families. We hypothesized that because teachers received feedback from families in the form of likes to the messages that were sent, they could imagine these conversations happening at home and thus gained a sense of trust in the support of families. Finally, teachers' high levels of participation throughout the study 17 out of 20 sending at least 80% of the messages and 13 out of 20 sending all of them indicated that the messages were not a time burden for teachers. As research, recent research indicates high levels of burnout for teachers during and after the pandemic, such light touch interventions are particularly promising as they respect teachers' economies of time. Finally, parents and caregivers reported an increased sense that the school kept them informed, providing a valuable window into the school lives of their children. They also reported an increased sense of trust in the school staff, perhaps due to receiving regular positive messages, inviting engagement at home, and providing a mode for brief responses. Parents and caregivers also reported an overall increase in their own confidence in teaching their children to enjoy and value school. Finally, when surveyed about their communication preferences, parents and caregivers overwhelmingly indicated preference for brief messages such as the one sent in our study, indicating that these kind of brief interventions may also respect the economies of time for busy families. While our pilot study was small, our results point to several implications for family engagement practice in schools and organizations. First, in early adolescence, um, schools and organizations must tailor engagement practices for middle schoolers and their families. Age supportive family engagement tailors the strategies to the developmental changes of early adolescence to help families and schools partner together to support young people at this critical time. Second, schools should prioritize relationship building grounded in trust. Trust is defined by Shannon Moran and Hoy as benevolence, reliability, competence, honesty, and openness. And these form the archway of family engagement outlined for us by Ann Turnbull. And the keystone of that arch, arch is trust, something that um, we can't have without each of these attributes. Third, we know that trust is successfully built through two-way communication, that which is consistent, positive, straightforward, and family-centered. Schools and organizations must take a systems level approach to planning for family communications to ensure that selected platforms are accessible and streamlined. Individual teachers must understand that adopting the common platforms of the school supports each family by ensuring that communication methods are consistent and user-friendly. Finally, schools and organizations must prioritize funding for family engagement professional learning for teachers and other family-facing staff. As advances in research continue to inform practice, educators deserve access to evolving methods and strategies rather than replicating outdated school-centered practices revealed as less effective. 
recognizing the value of educators as professionals who deserve investment will add value and esteem to their work. As they, as they see new strategies work, their sense of confidence grows and they're better able to partner with families for student success. So where can you go to learn more about research from our center and access tools for your school and community? We have some resources and tools to help. Um, there's a link on the screen and in chat. Um, and if you want to learn more about research and access tools from your school, you can go to our website where you'll find this full research brief with more information and tips about um, each of the strategies we talked about. Um, and then also we have a monthly news and guidance email that includes theme-based advice for teachers and other school-based professionals about how to implement best practices for family engagement in your school. If you've had an issue on middle school family engagement, you can access in our archives. Um, you can sign up to receive it and read past issues on our website. The two resources that are popping in right now, we have a tweet series bundled um, that you can share on social media that has each of these tips written for families in ordinary accessible language. Um, and then the, I think that the one pager that has the rocket and all of the tips on it, that's a one page tip sheet infographic for families that's perfect for middle school transition events or back to school nights. And all of the materials written for families, um, we have translated into Spanish, Arabic, Somali, Nepali, and Chinese simplified. And then finally, um, we recently had an article published in Phi Delta Kappen about this pilot study. And so in the chat, um, you will get a direct link to the article um, so that you can read more about it. Um, there you'll also find some of the sample messages that we used. So thank you so much for having me join today's conversation to share about our work. Thank you, Hadley. And to encourage folks to go and uh, check out that link in the cap and to learn more specifics about the study and the messages used. Please do keep your questions coming in. We're going to hold those until after this next presentation um, where we'll have a good uh, Q&A session and cover all the questions that are coming in. 